Now, unfortunately, the way is a bit dangerous, so do approach with caution. We're approaching in the dark, so some of the beasts are going to be sleeping, but that doesn't really make them any easier to get around. So we got to try and get them one at a time. Now, when, when animals are sleeping, you can get quite a bit closer to them, but the, the thing is you get within their sort of immediate aggro range by the time they wake up, and trying to slip past them here would be impossible. If you had the sneak skill, you could get around them, but it's really just not worth it. Oh, it seems I was wrong. I think in Gothic 2, you can actually get up to them until they'll just immediately attack you, but in this one... Damn it, one block again! God, that's annoying. It's like there's... Oh, jeez. It's like there's a certain phase in their attack where it just disables your block somehow. Right, so let's get the next one. Oh, God. Got them both. Just one, please. Oh, got them both. Go. Oh no, you don't. What are you doing? Ah, damn it, you got right between it. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't allow you to hold your block up forever. And uh, right in between it, they can actually uh, land a hit. And again, the pause seems longer, uh, depending on what, what action they're taking. I'm not really sure why that is, it's very annoying. Uh, you can climb up the side here. There's no real point to it because there's nothing actually up here. So I'm not really sure why they bothered with this. There does seem to be something up there as well, but as far as I know, there's nothing up there either. And there's also no way to get up there without cheats, so no point. Got another mole rat. Damn. Fucking hell. You motherfucking bitch. So yeah, as I've said before, it's not really the, um, the control system, like the design of it that bothers me, it's the... It's the unreliability of it. The input is not always recognized, and it causes a whole lot of trouble. Where, uh, just even when you press the buttons properly, it doesn't do anything. So there's a wolf over there kind of chasing one of the mole rats. I wanted to kind of hunt that one down, but I don't trust a wolf is going to come back at some point. So we'll... Make our way around him. Maybe we can kill a mole rat from this side. Yeah. For some reason, a mole rat just stopped. He's frozen in fear. And now the wolf is going to come try and eat it, so let's back off. So here. Ah, a visitor. Don't make any trouble here, or else you'll be for it. For what? I'd better be going. I hope we understand each other. This guy's a creep. He doesn't have anything important to say, so that's why I kind of ignored it. Uh. Anyway, this is the free mine, as it's called. It's the uh, New Camp's mine. And uh, it's fairly impressive. There's uh, quite a lot of construction on the outside. It's like a quarry out here and some caves underneath. And there's a lot of mercenaries around here guarding it, uh, making sure the uh, diggers are working. There's a couple people around here, but they're mostly a bunch of assholes. So uh, you can see that the there's a gate over the entrance, so you can never actually get inside at this point in time. If you do use cheats to get inside, you'll find things are not as you would presume they would be. And that's simply because you're never meant to get in there at this point in the game. So when you get in there, it's the everything you find in there is set up 
based on how the story has progressed by chapter four or so. So, don't really bother trying to get in there. Things are going to get weird, and you're probably going to get confused. Who are you? I'm the best mining engineer this damn colony has ever seen, my boy. I make sure half our boys don't go getting themselves killed by fallen rocks just because they're too stupid to scrape the right places. I'd like to join you as a scraper. Oh, yeah? Well, just don't think you're going to get anything much out of it. There's three portions of rice a day. Any extra, you'll have to see to yourself. Do you know why we're doing this? We're doing this job so one day we can all walk out of here to freedom. Well, that means all the ores to be handed in. Then it goes on the big ore mound. And once a month, everybody who's been working here gets 50 ore to get stoned on. That's the most important things you ought to know. Do you at least have any experience on the job? No, you should always say yes. Yes. Good. Then you know what to watch out for. Here's your protective clothing. You'll have to find your own pickaxe. Enjoy yourself. How much ore have you collected so far? The mages say that we won't need much more. Go to the new camp and have a look at the mound. Will do. So, what he gave us is actually, well, he said protective clothing. In truth, it's really just pants. Now, for some reason, my shoulders change when I put it on. Look, my biceps are different. And actually, the shirt does change as well. I'm not really sure. It's the same shirt. I'm not really sure why it's textured differently. Everything on the upper body is textured differently. I think the... The reason for that might be that the uh, the models for armor in this game are there the the um uh, the, the mesh for it uh, covers like all the other armors cover the shoulders the torso all the way down to the feet and sometimes they have gloves on but um so I think when they when they made the diggers pants. Even though it's just pants and it doesn't include uh, any shirt or anything, I think they had to kind of like redo, quickly redo the texture for your character's upper body to go with it, because otherwise it would just view it as kind of like an like a, a mesh with no texture. So I think your whole torso would probably be invisible. That's my uh, limited understanding of how textures and meshes work, though. Anyway, here's an asshole. Hey, you! You're not one of my men. What are you doing here? I'll just have a look around here. Then just watch out that you don't mess up here in the hollow, else you'll be in your grave faster than you'd like to think. Man, you're a jerk. Who are you? I'm Ocko. I'm the boss of the hollow. I just wanted to have a glance into the mine. Oh, you just wanted to stroll into the mine. Suppose you don't have a clue what's going on here. Nobody sets a foot in the mine without my permission. Always remember, whoever goes into the mine or the gatehouse without my permission is a dead man. Man, he is serious. I need to go on. Then leave me alone. So that guy is pretty, pretty legit. So he's the boss in the hollow. As far as I know, the hollow is just the um, sort of quarry section here. So he has no authority beneath the uh, hollow and the mine proper. But he does have the authority on who goes in or out, I guess. Now there aren't a whole lot of uh, named NPCs up here. There's Ockle, who we just talked to, Swiney, the mining engineer, and then there's this fellow just hey, kind of hanging out over here. What's up? Hi. You're walking about here as if you were searching for something. Really? Hmm. Maybe you're right. Why? Great. Ask me. Maybe I can help you. What did you have in mind? What do you need? What about a good sword, thick armor, or access to the mine? Ah, oh, no. That's nothing. I can give you something that'll make your eyes pop out of their sockets. I can give you a weapon that will defeat any foe. 
You only need to do me a small favor, then it'll be yours. What do you say? I can choose to, uh, you know, assume he's lying to you and then walk away. Or you can kind of humor him. What will I have to do for it? Very simple. Get me five apples, two bottles of rice snaps, five bottles of beer, three loaves of bread, two pieces of cheese, and two bunches of grapes, and we're in business. Whoa, whoa, Believe whoa. Believe me, you won't be sorry. As I just said, you'll really defeat any kind of enemy with it. You're not a very good pitch man, and I'm sure you are taking a piss, but I'll roll with it. Okay, I'll see what I can do then. Very good, but hurry up. Don't forget, five apples, two bottles. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Alright, so that's it for the uh, NPCs up here. All we really came up here for was the free pants. So not only... Not only does it uh, give us a small amount of defensive bonus, 10 protection against weapons, 5 against fire, no protection against arrows or magic, but no big deal. So here's another mole rat. Ow. Do things when I tell you to do things. So the other mole rat made his way back. Got around the uh, wolf just fine. So yeah, apart from giving us a small amount of protection, this this um this clothing is actually our ticket into the bar, as we will see shortly. And where do you want to go? Why, in there? Forget it. Silas only wants to see scrapers and rogues in his bar. I'm a scraper, and I'm thirsty. You look like one of those filthy rats. Come on in. So there we go. Because we're dressed like a scraper, we get our entry. Now there's a couple people with names in here. Senyan. You're from the Free Mine, right? Right. How'd you find that out? And that's that. He has nothing more to say to us. I have no idea what his purpose is. And here we have a fellow named Cypher. He doesn't do anything, but he will have a uh, purpose later on. Here's a fellow named Sharky. Now, Sharky, I think, spends more spends his time in the uh, in the um, actual camp. I'm so I, he's the only rogue I've actually seen come down here on a regular basis. Hey, how's it going? Do you want to buy something? Maybe. I need a few things. And he's got mostly crap. No weapon that's better than ours. But he's got some lockpicks, some potions. A couple schnapps. So I'll talk a bit more about the... Um... So yeah, each... Uh, each tooth you get from animals is worth five ore, and I think it costs fifty to learn it. So that's what is that? Yeah, I guess it only takes ten to make your money back. Where did we get these? Holy smokes! I don't remember getting those. Those are pretty valuable. Uh, so yeah. Um. Ooh, we cannot sell that. Uh. What was I saying? Yeah, I'll talk a bit more about the economy of the uh, old camp momentarily. And actually, and like when I think about it, I might have a better understanding of the of how how the uh, new camp works a bit. The rogues seem to be responsible for a lot of the. Food and the economy here. Uh, the rogues, of course, do steal a lot, but they also what what we passed by down here was the um, the rice fields. So they produce rice here. They harvest it, and not only do they process it for food, they also process it into a very cheap alcohol, which is what they serve at the bar here. And we've heard of the rice schnapps that they serve here. It's not it's not very uh, delectable exactly, but it is very affordable, very common, 
And they do trade it with uh, some of the other camps who uh, maybe run out of their more luxurious offerings, such as beer and wine. Now up here are a couple fellows. Silas is the guy who actually runs the bar. So he's the bartender, but he seems to be going to bed. How are things? Great. We trade our homemade rice snaps for ore. Well, the boys carry in enough ore. Where should they spend it if not here? I want a drink. You'll have to pay for it. You don't say. So for some reason he sells arrows. He barely sells any rice snaps. And he sells some potions. So we don't really need that or that. Yeah, you can find, like, gold coins in this game. They're not actually worth anything just because they don't trade that out of the camp. They don't trade that out of the valley. And since it's got no real value inside the valley, it just kind of goes to waste, really. There's no use for it. Now, for some reason, Silas, like, his uh, trade menu disappears after you trade with him once. It's a really weird glitch. I think some of the mods have patched that out, but I'm not really sure why it happens. Damn. Why did you Oh, hush. So, I figured I'd just take advantage of the bed while we're here. And during the daytime, those guys are both downstairs, so you can uh, take advantage of that to try and rob them. For some reason, they don't mind you coming up here. Left, right, Left, right, left, left. Very nice. And yeah, using beds, it's it's kind of funny how you can kind of exploit the AI. Ah, bugger. Right, left, ah, bugger. Right, left, left, right. So, yeah, uh, unlike games like... What the... You know, I always forget about this. There's a floating, like, candle holder up here. Kind of surprised that never got patched out. So, yeah, um, unlike a lot of uh, games like uh, Elder Scrolls... Wow, those pegs are off, too. They really fucked up up here. Um, unlike the Elder Scrolls, for example, you you can actually use beds that are owned... As long as uh, somebody else isn't using it, but if someone else is using it, in Gothics 1 and 2, you can actually wake them up. And once they stand up, you can take the bed. And it's pretty hilarious. Uh, for some reason, you cannot do that in any... In Gothic 3 or any of the Risen games. I'm not really sure why, but... Uh, yeah, so you can't really use that exploit anymore. Anyway, this fellow's name is Jeremiah. He seems to be the brewmaster here. What are you doing? I'm making rice snaps, boy. Here, have a bottle, but don't tell Silas. How's the distillery going? I can hardly keep up with these guys. Man, can they drink. That's a good thing, really. While I'm busy, the rice lord's lap dogs leave me alone. Rice lord? What can you tell me about the rice lord? He's a damn swine. His thugs pick on the weak and force them to work in the fields. Yeah, the only one who could stand up to him is Horatio, but uh, he doesn't do violence. Well, I did once hear him say he'd love to smash the rice lord's head in, but uh, he'd never really do it. He had to go against his beliefs. I see. Well, we'll certainly keep that in mind, because I have the strange feel. Excuse me. Whoa. I have a strange feeling that that information is going to come in use later. Uh, we'll talk to that guy later. Nice blue sky. Alright, let's have a word with a fellow on the bridge who has been standing here patiently all night. Homer. Are you looking for something? I'm looking for leaks in the dam. I reckon there's a lurker gnawing at the foundations. The beast grinds its teeth and claws against the stones and wooden beams underwater. If it carries on, the whole dam will soon be undermined. Oh, yeah? Is there anything I can do to help? Sure, stop that beast from gnawing at my dam. 
Where can I find the beast? I'd hunt round on the other side of the lake. Nobody ever goes there. That's probably where its den is. Stands to reason. Did you build the dam? Yes, I built the dam back when we founded the new camp. Of course everyone helped, but I was the master builder. So the dam, its function is to barely let any water through. Uh, mostly to ensure that the uh, rice fields don't get flooded. So, it's interesting that they, they got some really good engineers thrown in the colony here. Um, so, I'm assuming that all the engineers here were also convicted of a crime. But, they were probably thrown in here with a specific purpose of helping with a lot of the construction required to operate the mines. And uh, Homer was obviously a, a bridge engineer of some kind, and then Swiney was a mining engineer. Perhaps, though, some of these guys might not have actually been criminals, but they were sent here by order of the king, probably with pay, to try and uh, do some of this. But maybe got trapped in there as well, un unintentionally, along with the mages, when the uh, barrier was formed. You know what? We are going to uh, actually do the uh, mission down here. Basically, unless you want to do the same kind of drudgery every single day, you have to make sure that you don't approach the uh, new camp from the path. You should always approach from this side. But uh, we, we can do the mission once because we don't really get paid for it, but I think we do get experience for it, but only the hey, first time. Just arrived. We need somebody to take some water to the peasants in the rice fields. This way you can make friends with a few people. What do you think? Sure, I'll be glad to help. Great. Go to the rice lord. He'll give you the water and tell you everything you need to know. Once again, you have to be careful you don't misclick, because some of these dialogue options can uh, really screw you up. So this here is the Rice Lord. He is a real asshole. He's got an interesting weapon. You take care of the rice fields, don't you? Why? You looking for work? Lefty sent me. Oh yeah? What did he say? I'm to bring the peasants some water. Right. Here's a dozen bottles of water. There's about twice that amount of peasants, so make sure you share it out evenly. I have no idea what he means by that, because it is not possible to distribute these 12 bottles among over 20 different peasants. So it really doesn't matter. Just give the 12 bottles to the first 12 people you see. Now, this is where the game gets really annoying. Let me show you. Oops. Lefty sent me. Now, even though I skipped the dialogue there, I cannot skip the animation of him drinking it. Thanks, boy. I needed that. So this game, for all 12 bottles of water, forces you to watch every single one of these peasants drink it. It is extremely annoying. So I'm going to skip past all that. The first things I'm going to show you are the NPCs who actually matter. What are you doing here? You looking for trouble? Hey, relax. I'm a newcomer. Huh? You look okay, though. You never know. You get new guys come along thinking they're it every day. What's a man like you doing with the peasants? Lee asked me that. I don't fight anymore, except to defend myself. I killed a guy once. And that was once too many. That's why they chucked me in this goddamn colony. It was justice. How did it happen? It was just an ordinary bar fight. I didn't mean to kill the guy. I just must have hit him too hard. I was a blacksmith at the time. I didn't know my own strength. Why did you join this camp? I'll tell you. My only option was to join those cyclonies, and I didn't want to let those gurus of theirs mess about with my brain. In the old camp, I'd have had too much trouble with the guards, but the mercenaries and rogues do have some respect. They're afraid of you? Maybe. Anyway, I found peace here, and you should try the same. Now, it's interesting to note that even though we've heard that the rogues are pretty ruthless to the other fellows, they seem to 
respect Horatio a bit more, probably because they know he's the one who's actually strong enough to fight back. So they treat him with respect just to make sure that, uh, you know, he doesn't fuck him up. Can you teach me to be as strong as you are? Even if I could, what would you use your strength for? Now this is where you have to uh, be very careful. Now, normally if you haven't talked to Silas, uh, you have the option to walk away without really giving him an answer, and then you can come back with the uh, proper answer. If you use this, the uh, teach the bastards how to talk to me properly, or you say self-defense, Horatio will not uh, be on your side. He will not teach you anything. So you have to say that you want to take on the Rice Lord because that's the one thing Horatio wants to do, but just can't bring himself to do. So I can wipe out the Rice Lord and his thugs. Hmm. You wouldn't be the first to try that. But I will. I will defeat the Rice Lord and his thugs, if you help me. Good. I've sworn I'll never attack anyone again, but I never said I wouldn't teach anyone else to do it. I'm all ears. If you want to hit powerfully, you need to know the right tactics. That's the first thing you learn as a smith. Learn to push your whole arm through, from the shoulder down to the wrist. The better you get at that, the more powerful the blow. You'll get the hang of it pretty quick. Thanks. Thanks for your help. Use your knowledge for a just cause, and for nothing else. Well, thanks for helping me. Here's a bottle of water as payment. Lefty sent me. I've brought you some water. Thanks, man. I was just about to start drinking the mud. Alright, now there are two more peasants out here who have names and therefore something to actually say. The rest of them... I'll, uh, I'll take care of them off screen just so we don't have to worry about it. I believe the two fellows are down here somewhere. There's one named Pac. Hi, I'm new here. It's good to see a fresh face. You must have been here a long time, huh? Damn right, boy. Hey, I was one of the first. Now, I'm not really sure why, but I've noticed whoever this voice actor is, and I really want to find out his name, he's not really the most expressive, but he does enunciate a lot. You know, somewhat more naturally. I'm not really sure how to explain what I mean by that, but he's he's appeared in this and Gothic 2, and just the way he talks, he, he kind of, like, does a believable amount of... I'm not really sure what the word is. Just kind of, like, stammering and... Uh, I don't know, just... Like, he, he doesn't just read his script and then have done with it, nor does he exaggerate it a lot. He just kind of... He kind of reads it as though, you know, it was coming to his mind like it was a real conversation. I'm not really sure how to explain it better than that. In that case, you must know a lot about this place. So-so. Mm, I spend most of my time out here just picking rice. That's what let me get so old. We get some rice and the odd snaps. That's not much, but that's enough. Why are you here? Taxes, boy, taxes. My shed was as empty as my stomach, and I just couldn't pay. So one day the soldiers came and brought me here, but it's no worse in here than it is out there. At least I won't starve in here. Oh, I don't know why his uh, dialogue doesn't work here. Lefty sent me. I brought you some water. Thanks, boy. I needed that. You are quite welcome. And the other fellow is this guy? Yes, Rufus. Hi, I'm new here. I just wanted to know what goes on around here. Ask someone else, will ya? I do nothing but work out here in the fields. I don't know nothing. Man, I'd love to tell the Rice Lord to do his own damn dirty work. Damn dirty ape. If you don't like it, why are you working here? It happened the first day I got here. Lefty, one of the thugs that works for the Rice Lord, came up to me and asked if I could lend a hand in the rice fields. Sure, I said. I was new here and I wanted to make myself useful. The next day, when I was taking a short rest, the guy turned up again. 
You don't want to let all your colleagues do all their work by themselves, do you? He asked. I told him I was exhausted from the previous day's work, that I needed a rest and all that. But he never listened. He grabbed me by the collar and dragged me back to the field. From that day on, he stood outside my doorstep every day until I got used to going on my own. I didn't want any trouble with those guys. They're real cutthroats. You'd better steer clear of them. I'm afraid I've already missed out on that opportunity. Who is the Rice Lord? He was one of the first to arrive here. He helped found the camp and start up the rice fields. These days, he just hangs out at the warehouse stretching his stomach. The fat pig. Whoops. These. Lefty sent me. I brought you some water. Thanks, man. My mouth's like a desert. Alright, so that's four bottles of water down. Let's uh, take care of the rest really quick. Apparently that was all of them. I don't think I did a dozen that fast. Hey you! Well done! You're useful for something after all. I think this is exactly the right task for you. From now on, you do it every day. Go on with it right now. I think not. But... Perhaps... Lefty sent me. Oh yeah? What is... I'm to bring the peasants some water. Right. There's about tw So, it just kind of doubles up the quest. I'm not really sure why. So, uh, this kind of sticks around. You see the last entry there, it's, it's, it's supposed to make it pretty clear that you're not supposed to actually play along with this. So what I did there was I just scored a dozen free bottles of water. Yoink! 